Hey there, welcome to the Electronics Channel. In this video, I'm going to analyze this circuit here, figuring out the currents through and the voltages across all the resistors in the circuit using the superposition principle. Now, if you remember the superposition principle, it's the idea that we can analyze this circuit by splitting it, in this case, into two different analysis. One with a 10 volt circuit, 10 volt source turned on and the 12 volt source turned off. And then one with a 12 volt source turned on and the 10 volt source turned off. And then I take those results, add them together, and that's the overall voltage and current for each one of those elements in, in that particular, in this particular circuit. So to start off with, the first thing I'm going to do is redraw the circuit with just the 10 volt source. Remove the 12 volt source. When I'm removing a source, a voltage source specifically, I short the voltage source and that's effectively what I get when that voltage source is turned off. So in my redrawn circuit here, you can see I've got a definition for what the polarity of the voltages are and what the directions of the currents should be. Now, when I go through my calculation, I might, may find out that the voltage, for example, across R1 is a negative value. That just means that the polarity of the voltage is, is the reverse of what I have. So if I say I came up with negative one, that just means that this side is more positive than this side and it's plus one volts if I measure, if I measure in that orientation. So this, the analysis of this circuit with just the 10 volt source is, is now fairly straightforward. The first step that I can do is, is combine the R2 and R3. And, and just to keep in mind, remember what I'm trying to do is find the voltage across each one of these resistance, resistances and then the currents through each one of those resistors. So I can convert that into an equivalent circuit that looks like this. So I've got the equivalent resistance of the four ohm in parallel with the three ohm resistor right there. 1.7 ohms is the equivalent resistance. Now I can figure out the voltage. Uh, actually, no, let's, let's do the current first. That's the, that's the easier one. The current, so the current that's going through R1 and then the equivalent of the four parallel with the three. We'll call that IR1 because it's the current that's going through R1. Simply the 10 volts divided by two ohms plus 1.71 ohms. And that works out to 2.69 amps. The next thing I can figure out is the voltage across R1 because I now know the current that's going through it. And I can simply take that current, 2.69 amps, and multiply by the resistance. Okay, so I've got 5.38 volts across that two ohm resistor. Now, if I go back to this original circuit with a 10 volt on and a 12 volt off, I've got a 10 volt source, and now I have 5.38 volts a drop across the two ohm resistor. Whatever's left over is the voltage across R2 and across R3. But look, uh, R, the, voltage, the way I've defined voltage here is the voltage for R2 is positive here, negative here, and the voltage for R3 is negative here and positive here. So let's go VR2, just using Kirchhoff's voltage law. It's the 10 volts from the source minus the drop across that two ohm resistor, which we've just calculated to be 5.38 volts. And that works out to 4.62 volts. And VR3 is just the R2 and R3 are, are in parallel with each other. So VR and VR3 is just going to be the, the negative of, of VR2. Okay, and now that I've got the voltages across those two resistors, pretty easy, easy to figure out what the current through those resistors are. It's just going to be the voltage divided by the resistance. 
So IR2 will be that 4.62 volts divided by 4 ohms, 1.15 amps. And IR3, and that works out to negative 1.5 Oh, I'm kind of running out of space there. I'm going to write it over here because I got to put, I'm going to create up a table anyway. So for this case one of 10 volt on 12 volt off, we have our three resistors, R1, R2, and R3. And we've just calculated the voltage and current for them. So the voltage Okay, so that's the full analysis, getting all the voltages and currents for R1, R2, and R3. In the case when the 10 volt source is on and the 12 volt source is off. Now let's look at the second half of the superposition where the 12 volt source is on and the 10 volt is off. So that means the 10 volt gets dialed down to zero that just becomes a short circuit, and I can redraw the, the circuit here. Now let's redraw the polarities and, and current directions for each one of these resistors. So I've defined the current as that orientation and the, the voltage in that orientation, the current going up here. The four ohm resistor, the current's going that direction. And I've got the voltage, in, I've got the voltage defined in that orientation. For the three ohm resistor, Voltage is like that, and the current is going in that direction. So this is actually, the, the steps for the analysis of this circuit, it's pretty much identical to what it was for the 10 volt circuit. I just have a 12 volt source over on this side instead of the 10 volt source over on this side. So again, it's a fairly simple process. I can redraw the circuit to, to make it easier to analyze. This is a two ohm in parallel to a four ohm resistor, which is 1.33 ohms. Now I can figure out the current through, through R3 here. It's going to be the current that's going through R3 in this equivalent circuit. So it's 12 volts divided by the total resistance of this series, or cir series circuit, 3 ohms plus, plus 1.33 ohms gives me 4.33 ohms and a current of 2.769 amps. And then the voltage across R3 is simply going to be that current, 2.769 times the, the three ohms, and that works out to 8.3 volts. Now again, if I have 8.3 volts across this three ohm resistor, whatever's left over will be what's across this parallel combination, or the other way to look at it is going back to this original circuit here. It'll be the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor and the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor. So this one is R2, so VR2, because the orientation of the polarity that I've defined there is, is the same as what's across the 3 ohm resistor. So VR2 is simply going to be 12 volts minus what I've just calculated for that R3, 8.3 volts. And that works out to, well, I did some rounding in, in this, so it's actually going to be 3.69 volts without that rounding. VR3 is the opposite or the inverse of that, so it's negative 3.69 volts. Now I need to figure out IR2 and IR3. Well, IR2... We know the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor and we know the, the, the resistance of it. So it's simply going to be that 3.69 volts divided by 4 ohms. And that works out to 0.92 amps. And then IR3, no, IR, IR1. is also 3.69 volts, but the other polarity 
divided by the resistance of it, that's 2 ohms, and that works out to negative 1.845 amps. So now I've, I've figured out the voltage and current for each one of these resistors in the second case here. So this is the case where the 10 volts off and the 12 volt source is on. Got R1, R2, and R3, and I've got the voltage and the current values for each, for each one of those. Now I'll just fill in the table here. And now in the initial circuit, the voltages and currents for each one of those resistors will be the sum of the voltage and current from this table and the sum and volta uh, the, the voltage and current for this table. So overall for R1, the voltage will be 5.38 plus negative 3.69. I just don't totally trust what I've got here. I've got uh, 1.69 volts, and the current through it is 2.69 amps plus negative 1.846 amps, which gives me 0 0.84 amps. And then for R2, the voltage is 4.62 volts plus 3.69 volts, gives me 8.31 volts and the current through R2 will be 1.15 amps from the, the first circuit plus 0 0.92 amps from the second circuit. And then for R3, the voltage across R3 will be the negative 4.62 volts plus 8.3 volts, and that works out to 3.68 volts, and the current through it is negative 1.538 amps plus 2.77 amps, which works out to 1.231 amps. Okay, that was an example of the superposition principle in action for a simple circuit with only two voltage sources. So we have two, two different circuits to analyze and then take those, the, the results from those two circuits, combine them together, and that gives us what's in the actual original circuit. So thanks very much for watching. See you in the next video. Okay, I think I copied down right what I got here to hear. Hopefully those calculations were correct. See ya.